black. Snow flurry is down in Florida. Good, good. Two, three, two, seven. Pipe down in this little. This is the concrete countertop six days after pouring. I think I'll come in with some sandpaper, some fine, maybe some 220 sandpaper, sand it. And the backsplash, this is just what we were picking up at the store. I've got it laying in place. That's kind of what she's going to look like. And we picked up some uh, protective sealer, the wet look, so it's going to be a shiny. I might do some staining first, or I might just seal it like it is. Don't know yet. We'll cross that bridge in the future. Now when you first pour your concrete, it's going to be a little bit of a rough finish. If you go over a little bit with some sandpaper, I've got this worn out sanding block. It's probably 220 or less since it's worn out. You rub it over a little bit and it gets really smooth, really fast. It's hard to show you how smooth this stuff is, but it's really smooth. I'm proud of it. So I used to use my camper as a tool storage. Now I've got this van. It don't run yet. I think I'll use this as my tool storage. The tiny house bathroom is crowded with stuff. This would be a good hold spot. Let's do that now. Remember when I said the tiny house bathroom is crowded? Yeah, it's crowded. Let me turn the light on for you. It's got a little bit of everything in here. Tools and leftovers and paint and saws and whatever. Now it feels like I can get back in the bathroom and work. Got a little bit cleaner. I think I put on that tile board. So the crudy kid is learning paint the deck. Paint on. Paint on. Trying to do some finishing touches and I've got this piece of beadboard. It is ready to go on. Then we put that trim back on. The bathroom's about done. If you look out the window, you can see that little one has a shirt full of cucumbers. You take your foot and you swoosh over the leaves so you can see them in there. Oh, and you drop them. We probably need a bucket. What I'm doing here, I've got some cedar scraps. I'm going to glue and screw this. Then I'm going to drill a hole and this faucet's going to come right through the hole. And this is going to be where we hook up the hot water heater. Well, the water heater. I don't have a hot water heater. Why would you want to heat hot water?
Is there a bug in my hair? Mm -mm. Ooh, get the and there we have the faucet mounted with an extension on the back of it. This goes in our tiny house right up to the solar heated shower. Okay, the solar water hookup is mounted in place. That's how you turn it on. I've got the hose coming from the top of the tank and that'll screw onto here. I still gotta go underneath and do a little bit of glue in the, I got 190 to glue to that. I got 190 to glue together. Guess I can turn it off for now. Don't wanna waste all that hot air. Okay, this is the pipe I have to cut off both of these pipes and I'm gonna put this 90 on and then this portion is done. Okay, I'll glue it and I'll show you after I glue it. Okay, if we slide under, there's the bracket we just mounted that has the faucet on it. If we pan over, there's the 90 we just glued together and that supplies the solar heated water for the shower. update week number 11 and this week it's the cucumbers versus the squash and I believe the cucumbers might have won this week but next week we'll have the corn in this fight and I know there's some onions want to join in let's go out to the garden sunflower height check now she cannot reach the top let's move in a little closer yeah that's over your head there oh I can almost see some yellow going on in there Oh, well, let me show it to you. Bend over. Can you see through that leaf? Yes. You see it? Good work. Now, run over to the corn and then checking on the corn, she is not able to reach the top. Maybe by next week, that one's getting ready. This one's getting ready. This one's getting ready. That one's getting ready. Look at the size of that. It's getting yeah. filled out. One hiding in there, a little chunky one. There's another one hiding in there. Where? Where? What is it? Where? That's a watermelon. Mm -hmm. Get a little baby watermelon. Itty bitty. Here's another itty bitty. This might be the one from last week. That's the biggest one I've seen. Me too. It's about the same as one notch of a finger. Okra bush. Feels like it's finally doing something. I guess this is my Zaxby's commercial. Uh, the deal is I'm out of okra seed. I don't have enough okra growing, so I've got these old okra pods. This is from last year, year before last. I put them in the greenhouse and they dried out. When you open them up, there's a little seed fall out. That's what we're looking for right there. Just came in from the garden and we were on a school of cucumber. Caught our first zucchini of the season. Come on down, we got a whole bunch of squash. I guess there's no limit on the squash. If there's a limit, I hope the game warden didn't see that one. That one's a little bit undersized. It'll still taste good. And if we go a little bit more, mama has made some bean salsa. You like bean salsa? They can't hear you when you nod your head. Do you like bean salsa? Mm -hmm. Me too. Back of the squash and somebody got confused. It's not a squash. It's a dang bird. It's a something about a cucumber eating bird. He thinks that's his mama. Or, sorry, she thinks that's her mama. No, not the cucumber, the squash. Look at this little bird. He's your same size. There you go. Oh, give it a kiss. These pears are doing their thing. It almost looks like a Christmas tree with ornaments. The size of that little pear. 
It is time for expense report number seven. On expense report number six, we're up to $5,251.23. Now let's look at our receipts, see where we, uh, where did I buy my materials this time? We are currently up to $5,528.74 for expense report number seven. Now the oldest girl, she's been back at it. She signs these and she, uh, she didn't put the date on there for you. This is a girl looking through a flower wreath. This one, I think the uh, pencil was out of lead. Maybe you're making a shadow. That's better. Okay, Scarlett's gonna make some shadows. This, <clears throat> Uh, I guess this old couple found a unicorn and a bear, and yellow bears are very rare. And if you don't watch it, there is a cobra to the boot. Again, the uh, pencil broke. That one you can see the tree fold. She was folding it like a tree. Oh, how to say cat in Japanese? That would be cat. I guess it should have been fat cat in Japanese. Spin it. Oh, the butterfly play. Now, does that say butterfly? Mm hmm. Okay, well, that's how you say butterfly, and this is how you draw butterflies. I don't know how she does that in ink. I do pencil, yes, not ink. She didn't get that from me. And then she put a uh, dog in there driving the bug. Is that it? Mm hmm. Correction for all the Chinese and Japanese viewers that's actually Japanese. Chinese. Uh, Chinese, that's actually Chinese, not Japanese. Let's go back to the cat. And that's actually Chinese and not Japanese. Me, I can't tell the difference. Some of you can. Oh, if you are in that kind of language, if you could tell me, does that really say cat? Leave it in the comments. And does this really say butterfly? So I showed you some of the oldest girl's drawings, her recent drawings, and I had a viewer comment, what about some of your drawings? Here are some of my drawings. There's a drawing of my tractor. Is the glare too bad? That drawing took literally about eight hours to do. Here's another tractor. And I've never drawn rust before. That's rust up on the hood. There's a uh, gumball machine. A black tip shark. Leave me a comment if you know what that thing is. And there's my old VW bus out on the beach. So now you've seen some of my drawings, let's see some of your drawings. And here is a picture I took. This was somewhere around 4th of July. And this is all the kids when they were a little bit younger. I still got that big flag. If somebody needs a really big flag, leave me a comment. I'll sell it to you. We'll mail it out to you. I don't need a flag that big. Well, just for pictures. I've also got some sunflower seeds in the trunk of my car. Let's get those out now. We may want to plant some of these seeds. That's a sunflower that I grew about three years ago. Uh, what, eight foot tall, nine foot tall? Okay, when I cook my squash, I like a really big, deep frying pan. I wash my squash really good, get all that sand off. And I start with about a half a stick of butter. Real butter. Just put my burner on, put my butter in. So your first step, you're going to take the top off, the bottom off, and then I just chop them up. And here's that lid to keep the steam in. And I just found about a half of an onion in the fridge. It wants to go into the squash. I 
I like spicy food, so I'm gonna take some of this Creole seasoning. Starting to get some browning going on. Add some pepper. I added a little salt to the shaker, and it don't need a lot 